I'm here again with Anthony Pettiford, industry veteran. Um, Anthony, I, there, there, are, there are kind of three general pathways, although there's kind of modular route, integrated route, and MPL, although MPL is a kind of a modular course anyway. But the MPL's got a bit of a bad rap. Is it, is it dead? Is it finished? Is it gone forever? Well, Ian, thank you for asking me a question about a subject that I was intimately connected with in its genesis um, in terms of uh, it being introduced into the UK. Uh, without doubt, the introduction of MPL to develop competency-based training and assessment um, has been, from a pedagogic point of view, a major step forward in, in terms of training airline pilots and has proven to be very successful in that outcome. But absolutely one key element is airline support. You cannot have a multi-crew pilot's license course without the airline backing it from day one, not necessarily financially, but in terms of being participative in the way the cadets are trained, the operating procedures and the outcomes that the airline desires from their cadets. Without that airline backing, MPLs are not viable. And so at the moment, given the current state of the world, then we would expect that uh, MPL will be in a state of hibernation until the airlines, airlines are able to return back to the table and start supporting the, the objectives of the MPL going forward and hopefully helping with the financial situation as well. I, I mean, I can think of a couple of airlines that, that ran MPL courses that unfortunately failed partway through the MPL course or shortly after the MPL course. And an MPL license is linked to an airline, isn't it, in, at least initially? Yes. Um, and so kind of how, how, do people, how do people guard against that should, should or when the MPL comes back? Yes. Uh, I mean, in terms of the original design of the MPL, there was a, a contingency built into that. And certainly in my own day, when we introduced the first MPL at Oxford for, for EasyJet and Flybe, you know, we underwrote the reversion back to the integrated ATPL. And so therefore, that parachute, uh, which was part of its early design, should, in theory, be part of continuing designs going forward, because it's unreasonable to expect the cadet necessarily to, to underwrite that um, change in circumstances and them to share that burden. So hopefully going forward, that contingency will re-emerge and, uh, and therefore people will be able to complete their MPLs or at least revert to an alternative regulatory pathway and achieve their career outcomes. It, it seems to me that it should be almost uh, a requirement of an MPL that an airline ought to at least be guarantor for a loan or something like that, it should be on the hook for something. Um, otherwise, as, as a student undertaking an MPL, if you're putting all of the money up and you're tied to an airline and... If that airline fails for any reason, and unfortunately airlines do fail, then kind of you're the, the students taking all of the risk there. Yes, look, it's a fair observation. And but asking airlines to provide that financial contingency, whether it's in terms of the loan or whether reversion to alternative forms of training, what I'd like to see within the industry when it starts to re-emerge as a training course again, is there some form of contingency fund that can be used to underwrite not only the MPL, but other courses of training where cadets have been caught in this sort of financial interregnum. And I think as an industry, we're going to have to start becoming more innovative around funding because that innovation will then enable us to further tackle the diversity that's necessary and enable more people to enter the industry and not just about MPL courses. Absolutely. That whole... I, 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 for many, many years now, people have talked about um, improving the diversity in, in the aviation industry, but, but that requires somebody putting their hand in their pocket and coming up with some kind of funding model somehow. If you have that, that hoop that you have to jump through that, that means you just need that money, it, it really does restrict the, the applicability. Do you, do, you think, do you see that on the horizon sometime soon? I think it's for industry to lobby. I, I think there are a number of areas of, of funding pilot training that needs addressing. Uh, VAT is a really, really ex good example where it could make a tangible difference between somebody being able to afford pilot training or not. But I think as part of that process, we need to be able to look at some way of underwriting risk. Um, I mean, a good example is the CAA's uh, travel insurance schemes that they have to underwrite any failure of airlines. So the Atoll scheme is, is, is a classic example of where risk is shared and covered by some form of contingency idea. So as a training industry, I think we really need to start getting a bit more innovative. And, and, and in, the, in the kind of guise of BBC fairness, I guess the, the good ATOs would say, well, that's unfair because we'd have to contribute to that in order to support the bad ATOs who might fail. I, I think it's, it's, it's an observation that has validity without any doubt. Um, but I think the ATOs that you describe in inverted commas as being good uh, will want to embrace being in that moral territory 
and buying in that moratorium, particularly if one can ensure this risk as well, then I think that customers will be willing to take on that small amount of incremental cost in order to provide them with that protection and cover. So I think we really do need to, to think in, in a more lateral way about um, sorting funding out generally. No, I agree with that. And certainly, okay, so finally, the MPL, um, it, it's in hibernation, as you say at the moment. Other people would call it dead, but let's, let's say it's in hibernation. When do you think we can expect to see it coming out of hibernation? And, and should, we, should we be careful with our bonfires to make sure there's no MPL hiding under there? You're asking me to put a timescale on it, aren't you? And then say, yeah, look, I think three years. And uh, I think at least, and I think by which time, we may find the airlines are in a financial position and there's a growing positive energy amongst aspirant pilots to want to, to go to ATOs that have rekindled and redeveloped relationships with airlines. And what I'd like to see also come out of this is competency-based training and assessment also developing greater energy, not only around MPL, but on the integrated courses, as well as the modules. I mean, for example, APS MCC is a competency-based training and assessment course, and I'd like to see greater energy around all of this and, and achieving the ICAO goals. Um, around all training courses being competency based. Okay, so three years is your is your three estimate. Years, three years is what I expect for the, if you like, a reincarnation of some meaningful discussions between ATOs and and airlines. I think before that, I think the airlines are just going to be too engrossed in recovering their economic and financial stability. Thank you very much, Anthony, for your time.